Greetings everyone, I'm Prince B, and today we are going to be reviewing... No, my lamp! It must be the work of mischievous yokai. Yo-kai? My prince, I think you're just clumsy. No, it was yokai! <sighs> Do I even want to know? You don't know yokai? Then I'll explain with this. The game isn't out yet. See? It says demo. We're talking about the anime in case that wasn't clear. Yokai watch. Ah, isn't it that Pokemon knockoff? You take that back, I will end you. <sighs> no. Let's actually take a look before we make snap judgments. Sound fair? Good. Then let's get started. Prologue. Background information. Yokai Watch is an animated series based off the game of the same name. We'll be looking at both eventually, but we're going to start on the anime since the game has not yet released in America. It first started in early January of 2014 and is currently ongoing, with nearly 100 episodes. It has also begun airing in English in late 2015. As for what yokai are, they're essentially Japanese spirits and monsters, found in legends and folktales. They're known for being both harmful and benevolent, and quite often simply mischievous. Yokai have been blamed for many things, and in this series they're to blame for the many minor inconveniences that occur in day-to-day -day life. They exist on an alternate plane, but can affect things on the human plane in various ways. They also take many forms, from the turtle-like kappa to the more human futakuchiona to even inanimate objects like kasa obake. Further, like western spirits, it's common for them to possess a person or location, referred to in this series as inspiriting. Of course, this by no means covers everything about them, but should be enough to follow along. With that out of the way, let's start the actual review. Chapter 1. Story and Characters The animated series follows Nate, an ordinary boy, who also happens to be the male protagonist in the games. One summer day, while searching for beetles, he comes across an old capsule machine. A mysterious voice commands him to place a coin in the machine. He does, and receives his prize. As is often the case with these machines, it isn't exactly what he wanted, and out pops a yokai called Whisper. Whisper explains to Nate that he'd been sealed within the capsule machine for over a hundred years, and as thanks for freeing him, he is going to follow Nate and serve as his personal yokai butler. Much to Nate's annoyance. Upon arriving home, Nate finds his parents are fighting, which is out of the norm. Whisper claims it's the work of a yokai, and gives Nate the titular Yokai Watch, which allows him to see and communicate with the spirits. From there, Nate begins using the watch to find troublemaking yokai and befriend them, most notably Jibanyan, the mascot of the franchise and speaker of many cat puns, the highest form of humor. While there are two ways to befriend a yokai, battle or diplomacy, the anime tends to focus more on the latter, while the game of course follows the former. After befriending a yokai, Nate receives their medal, which acts as an ID card of sorts, and when placed into the watch, can summon that yokai to assist him. Whisper, Nate, and Jibanyan are the main characters, and as such receive the most characterization, specifically Jibanyan, who has a rather tragic story. Nate's family and friends also appear frequently, and receive some decent characterization as well. Aside from them are the various yokai. Some of these get some characterization, and some have a surprising amount. Also, because many of the spirits are based heavily in Japanese folk tales and dilemmas, there are a lot of problems and scenarios that are presented that don't necessarily translate as well to a Western audience. With that said, I was rather surprised with the number of ones that do have a universal appeal, even if the designs don't necessarily translate. That's about all the time we have to spend on this section, so let's move on to the presentation. Chapter 2 Art Style and Audio In terms of art direction, everything is really well done. It's not the most detailed, but it's pretty good. I can't really complain about anything. As far as audio goes, the VA work for the Japanese version is really good, and while I prefer to watch in Japanese, the English dub is by no means bad either. In fact, it's much, much better than I'd anticipated. There are some characters who are voiced really well, and some less so. 
In terms of background music, it's pretty good. Not much more to say than that. It fits well. Also, it's worth noting that the opening and ending songs are insanely catchy and super popular. The official video for the first closing song is at over a hundred million views. Wow. They're fun songs that just make you want to get up and dance along, making them perfect for kids. D don't, don't judge me. <laughs> These were also changed for the English dub. The opening in particular attempts to give a better idea of just what yokai are, which is important since the average Japanese child would understand what yokai are, but we wouldn't over here in the West. There's more yokai than titties in Idaho. I I'm sorry, more yokai than what? That's not even true. Well, I get that they're trying to say that there are a vast number of yokai, that statement just isn't true. You can't lie to kids, man. They'll believe you. And when they realize there are not, in fact, more yokai than potatoes located in the American state of Idaho, well, how do you think they'll feel? Think of the children! <clears throat> Lying to children aside, the dub is pretty good. Um, yeah, let's move on. Chapter 3. Episodes and Pacing The episodes are about 22 minutes long, but are divided into multiple smaller mini-episodes, each usually focusing on one yokai in particular a typical monster of the week formula. Unfortunately, a lot of yokai only show up in one episode because of this, so if your favorite isn't one of the main ones, you probably won't see them again after that. The upside to this, though, is it means you don't really need to watch them in order, and while there is some plot, it more hints at the movie rather than being especially relevant to the anime as a whole. Sometimes there are miniseries that focus on one yokai's adventures in particular, usually Manjima early on, and Komasan after that. This is cool, as it gives a way to break up the monotony of the normal formula of something's wrong, find the yokai, deal with them, end. The anime also has a lot of humor, both off-the-wall parodies and toilet humor, which I'm really not a huge fan of. But it does make sense given the target audience. Unfortunately, this too suffers the problem of being very formulaic. The whole thing is very susceptible to monotony, and as such, while it is certainly fun to watch, I recommend against binging on it, as it gets old pretty quickly. Which is really unfortunate, as I feel like there's more potential here than what's being explored. Next, let's look over some themes that show up commonly in the show. Chapter 4, Ideas and Themes An important theme of the show is that of friendship. This is shown in literally every episode, and the summoning chant in Japanese is even, Come on out, my friend. This is also reflected in that the more common way of dealing with the conflicts is through talking out the problem or searching for an alternate solution as opposed to physical conflict. Also, Yokai Watch shows us that extraordinary things can happen to even the most ordinary of people. Lastly, it attempts to rationalize the bizarre things that happen in life, which is really cool but it should be noted that it's not a good idea to try and shift the blame for everything, which is something this show could really work on. I'm still waiting on an episode where plenty of things that could be attributed to yokai occur, yet it turns out it's not their fault at all. This would really help Nate realize that you can't blame all your problems on yokai, and that sometimes bad things just happen and you have to accept them and deal with it. It's not likely to happen, but I can dream. Daydreaming aside, let's move on to the verdict. Final chapter, verdict. Yokai Watch is simple, yes, but that's not necessarily a bad thing when you consider the target audience. Further, it's not like there aren't little jokes and references for an older audience to enjoy. When you consider that, the anime is very accessible to anyone. With that said, again, I want to emphasize that due to the semi-repetitive nature, I'd recommend against watching a whole lot in one sitting, and instead would recommend pacing it out. The animated adaptation of Yokai Watch receives a happy ending. I'm actually kind of jealous. I wish this had been around when I was a kid. I would have enjoyed it. Also, can I just say the number of yokai that must be inspiriting me is pretty high, no matter how you look at it. I don't think you can blame the fact you're weird on yokai. 
So that's Yokai Watch, or at least the animated version anyway. Well, that gives you a basic idea of what the concept of a yokai is. There's still a lot to cover, most notably the game, which we'll be discussing next time. Until then, I'm Prince B, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And be sure to dial in for part two, where I review Yokai Watch, the game.